Keeping in line with the theme today of basically empowering employees and extending this on to frontline workers, I'd like to talk about a scenario around empowering store associates. Now we're picking retail because that's the industry I think everybody has a touch point with. We all do shopping, so we're all familiar with uh, with retail. And uh, just a quick word on frontline workers. Your frontline workers um, is that persona that bas that's just basically not a is n is not basically an information worker, not really working um, a desk job like uh, the folk folks here on the call today. Uh, but think of them as field workers, workers who are actually actually maybe on the store, interacting first with the customers, having a first-hand experience with the product, and actually delivering those services and that experience that act that's actually. Uh, designed in the, in the boardroom and that's why it's so much more important to, to empower these workers with the right tools to affect those business metrics positively. So uh, Harish, if you could go to the next slide, I'm going to see if I can uh, request some control. OK, cool. So um, the scenario that we're talking about right now is about retail um, and um, Let's take an example of a big box retailer where we have a large retail store that also sometimes doubles up as a work as a warehouse where we have a lot of uh, let's say uh, a, a lot of inventory uh, uh, just in the back of the store uh, where where is the warehouse and a retail store combination and the the personas that we're talking about today are one is the let's say uh, one is the store associate in this case the name here is uh, Adi who's the store associate and uh, Adi's job is basically to make sure that he's basically interacting with customers helping them uh, making sure that uh, customers find what they need and the shelves are basically stocked with the right kind of goods in the right kind of inventory. And then there is the warehouse picker Babak here, who's, who's basically uh, making sure that the inventory levels are maintained and, and then and whenever there's a replenishing request, either from the warehouse to the store or in the warehouse itself, itself in terms of raw inventory, uh, they, he has a view and is able to, uh, is able to keep keep stock of the inventory now without these tools today um, there's no automated view of inventory available to store associates or where um, or sometimes to warehouse pickers and um, anytime um, any re kind of replenishment re replenishment from the warehouse needs to happen to the store it's actually a manual process or a paper based process sometimes uh, you may find frontline workers uh, using shadow it tools the likes of whatsapp uh, wechat with whichever is relevant um, uh, in the region um, it, this often uh, leaves a lot of room for error prone processes and basically uh, reducing efficiency. So we'll go, we're, we're going to be taking you through an entire journey of um, of uh, stock management and inventory uh, through these personas. So if you could go to the next slide, Harish. Sorry, I'm unable to change here. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so. Uh, this is the persona from the uh, from the point of view of the store associate and the store associate. Let's say um, you could go to the next one. The store associate basically is approached by a customer and they're looking for a particular product and while they're looking maybe let's say for eight units and they were they're able to find about three or four in the store. But uh, now they're uh, looking at the customer care associate to see if they have more in the back, which is like a very common kind of scenario. And on the next slide, so uh, now with this tool, the um, this customer care associate basically has uh, an option to look up for any any particular SKU or particular uh, product using uh, the QR code or barcode scanner. They could you could easily pull that up, uh, scan the uh, kind of SKU that they're actually looking for, and the the system recognizes the code as we see on the next slide. Harish, the next. Cool. Yeah, so the, the system recognizes the scanner and here we're using inherent device capabilities in uh, of the camera and basically being able to scan the uh, the QR code through the camera. Uh, the code is recognized and the system basically tells them uh, that uh, they're basically they have 11 uh, quantity uh, of these items uh, in stock in stock today and the, and a minimum level and what's the unit price etc and they do find that okay there are, there are only three here on the store and then the others are in the back in the in the warehouse um, they could quickly use walkie talkie now this replaces that manual step of having to hunt around and look for uh, the warehouse picker or or maybe basically having to reach them face to face um, using the walkie talkie uh, they could ad hoc reach uh, the entire warehouse picking team and whoever is on duty uh, we see on the next slide that um, Babak is on duty and he's um, at that time on shift and he's able to get that message and he picks up this request on the walkie talkie sending out a confirmation and then because this is an ad hoc request it's an ad hoc flow where a customer is on the floor and uh, requesting a quick uh, response he could quickly use the inventory app at his own on his own phone and basically locate the SKU 
um, using the locate skew button on the top, the search bar, and it could e either has the option to either search uh, by typing it out or uh, scanning a code. In this case, he's just basically scanning. Uh, in, in this case, he's basically typing it out because it's an ad hoc request, and the system basically gives him these uh, responses. Um, he's also presented with a view uh, of the uh, rows and columns in which the bins are placed in the in the warehouse and he know exactly which row and column he has to go to to pick up this request and he can just quickly go to that bin uh, pick up that uh, uh, pick up those queues and complete the request as we um, as we see in the next slide so as he goes but uh, the thing that we want to be careful of is uh, people are people are registering all the pickups from those bins and all the restockings and therefore, when you pick up, uh, he's prompted to basically uh, scan those, uh, scan the items that he's picked up using the scanner, and uh, log in, log in the amount of inventory he's uh, he's putting in on the next slide. Yeah. Now, as he puts in the next uh, slide, uh, the app recognizes that they've actually gone below the minimum stock level, and therefore he's presented uh, with this in low inventory alert. And if he just uh, checks that box on uh, submitting the request uh, to reorder. The app automatically takes care of the replenishment the, the replenishment order. So he's picked up the order now. Uh, he's also submitted a restock request to make sure they're never below uh, their requisite inventory levels, and he submits it. Now this was an entire ad hoc flow where he was able to reach the warehouse picker, where the store associate is able to reach the warehouse picker on walkie talkie, and basically get um, get uh, goods uh, uh, delivered to the storefront. But there could actually be a more planned flow, uh, and this happens in, in a lot of retail processes where, where actually uh, the store associates would actually take rounds of the store in the morning and see if there is any replenishment required and if they have the requisite screws according to the campaigns that are running or according to the season that they have. So as you see on the next slide, they now the inventory app also uh, has the option for requesting for a restock. Now this is a more planned flow where uh, requesting for restock basically allows the customer care associate to uh, search for those SKUs and prepare a list of sorts, a digital list of all of the SKUs that they need. So you see on the next slide, there are there's a list of um, as you scan every item that needs to get ordered or you manually punch it in, you get the variance in terms of their quantity and the and the various uh, the various quantities that they're available in, and you you add them in, in as to what's the kind of order that needs to uh, come into the store. Um, yeah, you complete that order, adding different products. Um, here we see the detergent first, and here the the instant coffee here, and then you go ahead and submit that request. This is how the customer care associate could complete their flow in the morning and make sure the stocks on the on the shelves are basically there. Um, this request actually now goes ahead and lands in the team where all the warehouse pickers are added. So when they turn up for their shift, uh, they basically see the list of uh, the shelves getting started, which are the shelf replenishment requests that they have. Now these uh, these requests are up for grabs and they could go ahead and assign them to themselves or if there is a store manager, they could assign them to the to the um, relevant um, warehouse picker. Once they do get assigned, um, the app uh, on this next slide, you'll see the app basically helps um, the, uh, the assigned request basically show up in one single view for the warehouse pickers. Where they can start picking all of these all of these items, um, and as they as they as they uh, go through the list, they basically also presented with a map view of the entire warehouse as to where it is that these items are actually located. Uh, they go in to those relevant bins, pick up those items, and on the next slide, as you see, they scan those items. And again, the whole scanning um, point of uh, whole scanning point around this is pretty important, just to make sure that the inventory levels are up up to date at at any point in time. Um, and just when they've added and scanned everything else, they can go ahead and click on fulfill and submit that order. And that completes that whole planned workflow. Now, um, lastly, um, as the goods move from the warehouse to the store and keep getting sold, eventually the warehouse is going to run out of goods. So there's going to be a regular replenishment that needs to happen for the warehouse as well. And uh, so that we're not in ever in a solution in a situation where the warehouse is out of goods completely. Uh, there's a low stock alert also uh, presented to the store managers periodically when any SKUs uh, basically go out, go out of stock. And this could be, of course, configured to go to the relevant store manager or the relevant SQ manager um, as required. And in this case, while we were talking about one store and one warehouse, this could be easily extended to uh, one store, multiple warehouses in the region, um, multiple stores in the region and multiple warehouses in the region. And that map could actually um, uh, be a map of 
different warehouses in different locations as well. Yep, so this um, back to that personal scope app here where the store manager basically gets the low stock alert, is able to put in and put in a low stock, um, uh, the replenishment request here. Um, if we do have integrations uh, with other partner systems, uh, there could be um, a real time view of uh, the uh, sort of a track and trace of how the inventory is actually coming in. Uh, yep, you could go to the next slide. Arish. Yep, that actually completes the entire flow. And like I said earlier, um, while we took for simplicity the example of one store and one uh, one warehouse, it could actually spread across multiple um, warehouses, multiple retail stores. Um, I'm going to see if we have um, any questions. Hey, you're on mute, Harish, in case you're speaking. I didn't realize. I, this is awesome. I have a question. Um, again, uh, just with the previous, like with the previous example, there are different ways in which uh, you know the whole retail and inventory management works across different organizations. So what you have shown is um, just like an example of what is possible, right? And correct. correct. The so entire is, thing could be done yeah. completely differently. Exactly. This is exactly what we refer to as the art of the possible. This is one possibility of what can happen. Of course, today there are point solutions that many retailers may be using in terms of ERPs uh, where all of the inventory information lies and those ERPs could actually serve as systems of record and uh, this the Teams app could actually serve as that system of engagement uh, where the users have access to all of that data and are able to make synchronous updates to the ERP from the Teams app itself. 